Hey guys, this is Satyajit Patnaik and welcome back to my channel. In this video, we shall be talking about one of the most important problem in machine learning or deep learning. And the problem is nothing but class imbalance problems. And what exactly is class imbalancing? We will be talking each and everything about class imbalance problem and how to deal with it. Everything will be discussed in this video. Stay tuned. So as I was talking about the class imbalance problem, what exactly is class imbalance? Now, when it comes to machine learning or deep learning, whenever you solve a problem, just imagine you're talking about fraud detection. Now we know that frauds happens once in a blue moon. So maybe one out of million records would be a fraud. Similarly, when it comes to medical industries or healthcare industries, the diseased patients are way less in numbers as compared to the active ones, right? So when it comes to these kind of problems, these kind of classification problems where you're dealing with churn and not churned, fraud and not fraud, these kind of problems, it's often seen that 99.99% of the cases, the data set is properly imbalanced. That means they're not balanced in nature. That means for class A, let's say the fraudulent transactions and class B, the non-fraudulent transactions, the ratio won't be similar in nature. It could be a 90-10, it could be 80-20, it could be a 95-5% ratios, it could be anything. So simply a problem statement or a data where your two classes or more than two classes have a lot of imbalanced data points. That means one class is having more number of records as compared to other classes. That's where the class imbalance problem occurs. How to deal with it? There are various techniques to deal with it. So when it comes to class imbalancing problem, it is common problem in data science, machine learning and deep learning use cases. What exactly is this? And why does it occur and how do we solve it? So what exactly is this is quite simple. It all depends upon the use case, right? We are not solving a very simple use case that it will have balanced data points like the iris data or some breast cancer data. So there are various easy data sets as well to practice. But in real time, your life could be miserable. There could be a lot of imbalanced data points and you have to deal with it. So class imbalancing is something which is very common in any kind of problems. You have to deal with it, right? How can we deal with it? There are various techniques to deal with it. There are various approaches to deal a class imbalance problem. There are some data level approaches which you need to do some data tweaks. And there are some algorithmic level uh, approaches as well where the algorithm, the, 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 the classifier which you are using will be able to deal with this. So in this video, we are quite focused on the data level approaches. Okay. When it comes to data level approaches, there are multiple techniques to solve this problem. SKLearn resampling, SMART, SMART ENN and ADASIN. Apart from that, there are various other techniques to deal as well, like cost sensitive classifiers. There are some class weight balancing out in random forest classifiers as well. But here in this video, we shall be focusing on four to five different approaches of doing this, I mean, solving this problem. Just imagine this thing. What exactly is class imbalance problems? I hope everybody is kind of aware this, aware of this. Let's say you have 10,000 records out of which 8,000 people are active and 2,000 people have left the company, right? In case you are creating a model. Now, if I, if I create a simple Python code that any transaction that comes in, just predict it as active customer. In that case also, out of this 10,000, I will be able to predict 8,000 correctly. Right? My accuracy is still 80%. Now, is this a good approach? Well, the answer is no. Right? Because my model is not able to predict the churn customers properly. So any use case you are dealing with, 
your first priority is to understand the minority class in this case the minority class is the class having 2000 data points you should always focus on the precision recall and f1 score of the minority class okay there are two techniques to understand to deal with this what if i create one model where i take 8000 active customers data and for churned customers i manually duplicate them and make it 8000 now i create a model i have 16000 records and the model will be able to predict it another approach is from churned customer i take 2000 from active customers i randomly take 2000 data points here i have my balance data and I create a data with 4000 records and I will be able to predict it. The only drawback in this approach is that I am not considering the 6000 records from the active customers. That means I am missing out on information. Okay. These are the two naive techniques uh, of understanding how to balance out the data. When it comes to deep learning, when you are using some image cases, let's say you have an image. A cat's image how to how to create copies of images how to create data points by doing some zoom out zoom in flipping so there are various techniques adding noise adding some filters so there are many image augmentation technique when it comes to images similarly when it comes to audio data what is audio data it is amplitude versus time right Am amplitude versus time Again, in audio data also, you can trim the data. Let's say you are removing this part. You are removing this part. Or else you are changing the pitch of your voice. Let's say now your pitch is some deci decibels. You are increasing or reducing the pitch. So there are various other techniques based on the data. You can do your augmentation and do synthetic data creation and then get rid of this imbalance problem and solve the problem. So let's go ahead and talk about the code part here i have taken a teleco churn prediction use case and here i'll not be able to run the code but i will leave this document in the description below so that you can run it by yourself what is this data set this data set is telco customer churn data set and i am pretty much sure that this is 80 to 20 percent ratio so the information data dot information now these are the information number of rows in the data set 7000 number of columns 21 these are the features no missing values these are the unique values so there are so many records where there are null values right so we clearly say that there are missing values in each column removing the missing value from the total charges nan values are present in the data set so here i am replacing the nan values and here i am changing the data type of the columns from object to numerical data type because you can see here in the information monthly charges is float but total charges is an object so you should always convert it into a float type or an integer type and then do the further processing these are some basic steps which i have done here i'll just skip this part these are the basic machine learning eda concepts I hope everybody must be aware of it. Our main concept is to go through the multiple imbalancing uh, cases, right? And then see how the data points looks like. Finally, after dropping the non-essential columns and doing one hot encoding, our final data set is this. Here I'm splitting the data. My class A is 5000 records, class B is 1800 records. So if you calculate the percentage, 5174 plus 1869 which is 7043 7043 around 73 percent of the data is having active customers and rest are non-active so here i have divided the data into training and test split now i'm performing the first step which is the sk learn up sampling and down sampling so the step i explained here this is basically your sklearns 
upsampling and downsampling. Here I have divided the data into majority class and minority class. Here I am calling the resample method by sklearn utils. This, this basically, this is a default strategy implements one step of the bootstrapping procedure. Resample arrays or sparse matrices in a consistent way. Here, first step is I am doing DF minority upsampled. I am calling resample. I am calling DF minority. So, just imagine this step like this. So, let's say I have let's say I have 10,000 records simple 8,000 is my active data 2,000 is my inactive data here what I am doing is I am creating a new churn data passing resample passing resample passing my DF minority that means 2,000 records here I am passing n samples equals to this instead of this you can also do length of your training data set Okay, the majority class has 3688. So here I'm passing that I need these many samples. And once I run this, this data frame will have, it will not have uh, the data points like the minority class. So here if you ask n samples equals to 8000, the output of this will have 8000 records. That means synthetically it will create some uh, duplicated records. And same, my mistake. Here I am performing the upsampling. So after I perform my downsampling and upsampling, you can see these are my results. Here for my minority class, I am able to get a 53% precision, which is bad. Recall is 76%, which is good. And F1 score is 62, which is good. Using downsampling, I am able to get a better recall. Precision is somehow lower than that. And F1 score is also similar. You always focus on the minority class. Okay, I'll just copy paste this code so that we can capture it. Up sampling, down sampling, make it big, down sampling. Okay, so using upsampling and downsampling, I don't see a major difference. Now we'll move on to the next one, which is SMOT. SMOT stands for Synthetic Minority Oversampling Technique. This is a statistical technique for increasing the number of cases in your data set in a balanced way. The module works by generating new instances from existing minority cases that you supply as input. So here I'm doing performing the smart steps um, I'm just taking the DF data frame and I'm just dropping the random non-used columns here I'm calling the IMB learn so IMB learn is again one of the libraries very similar to SK learn it has its oversampling method I'm calling smart I'm doing oversampling after performing oversampling this is my training data same data points right See 7300 data points for class 0 it is this much for class 1 it is this much you can see the original data had like this but after oversampling now my minority class also has this many records my majority class also has this many records so somehow smart is similar to upsampling but not exactly same and here once I call this smart technique and then calling the classification report this is how my output looks like not great but my recall is enhanced there is another technique called as adasin which is based on the idea of adaptability adaptively generating minority data samples according to their distributions more synthetic data is generated for minority class that are harder to learn compared to those minority class that are easier to learn here I'm doing the same steps and then calling the IMB learn over sampling add us in. Now you can see these many data points we have and then I'm calling the same techniques. And now 
using adasin these are my results somewhat similar not great i would still go with upsampling which is giving me good precision rate and then comes the smart enn this is my personal favorite because i have worked on various use cases using this technique and definitely one of the most important technique i would say when it comes to imbalanced data sets smart enn is another hybrid technique where more number of observations are removed from the sample space here enn is yet another undersampling technique where the nearest neighbors of the each of the majority class is estimated if the nearest neighbors misclassify that particular instance of the majority class then that instance gets deleted integrating this technique with oversampled data done by smart helps in doing extensive data cleaning process here on misclassification by nn samples from both the classes are removed this results in a more clear and concise class separation performing the same steps here also i am using imb learn calling the smart enn if you want to see the documentation of smart enn you can go ahead and check out this one this is a oversampling technique using smart and cleaning using enn technique combine over and under sampling using smart and edited nearest neighbors and then calling the classifier you can see the results it all depends upon case to case some cases you might see smart enn performing better some cases you might see some other techniques working better so it all depends upon your case your understanding you can see if i will have to choose you can see f1 score is almost same in all the cases recall is somehow low here high here and precision is i will definitely pick smart enn because it is having a better recall rate and around 70% precision which is good it, it, it all depends on case to case i mean you can choose upsampling or else smart enn as per this particular use case i will be using smart enn or upsampling and i will try to perform some hyperparameter tuning techniques to enhance this scores this is all about this particular video i hope you enjoyed and learned something out of it at least about the class imbalancing part and one thing which is left out is going to be the algorithm level on how different algorithms work and how different algorithms has the capabilities to balance out data that will come as part of a separate video that's it for this particular video in case you like it please like share and subscribe the channel press the bell icon to get notified and don't forget to comment out in the comment section below that helps me to gain more traffic and gain uh, more traction to my channel i'm working hard on the concepts and various projects there are a lot of important stuff a lot of important videos which are planned in the near future and that's it about this particular video i hope you enjoyed it thank you